Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the third uh, BTAP symposium. Uh, we first uh, um, undertook a, a mini conference or a backpacker conference in Cairns. Last year was at Coolangatta, and this year, of course, in uh, sunny Newcastle. Um, a bit of a cold shock to uh, all of you from Queensland, I'm sure. Uh, I think, what was it, six degrees this morning or, or less? Um, but even a colder shock for anyone from the Blue Mountains where it snowed yesterday. So um, uh, it's uh, a, a nice start to winter, let's say. A um, few quick housekeeping notes. Uh, first of all, uh, bathrooms are straight outside and on the right-hand side. Um, uh, mobile phones, if you could turn them off, it would be great. If you're expecting calls, if you could put them on silent. Um, we all have businesses to run or, or, or to be part of, so if anyone does need to take a call, make sure it's on silent or vibrate, and you're most welcome to leave the room if you need to. Uh, my name's Peter Ovenden. Uh, I uh, sit on the BTAP panel uh, with a few of you in the room as well. Um, my role today as Master of Ceremonies is just to make sure that things move along quite smoothly. Um, if there's anything you might need, let us know. Save questions to the end of each presentation. That would be fantastic. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, innovation and innovation into the future. Um, I'm, I'm lucky enough to attend a few conferences around the world um, as part of my role with my company. And I have to tell you that the rest of the world watches what we do in Australia quite carefully, especially in the backpacker tourism space. And as a result of attending these conferences, I also get to look at the agendas of the conferences. And I want you to know that we actually pretty much set the agenda um, for, for what follows around the world in backpacker tourism. And that's in terms of as an organised group of people. Um, I recently attended a conference in Spain, for example, that um, was, it was... It reminded me of, of where we were 15, 20 years ago in our industry. Um, and through innovation and, and, and by moving forward is the only way this industry is going to improve. And today we're going to challenge you a bit. We're going to... Uh, we've got the great debate later on this afternoon, uh, which is uh, retail versus online. Um, we want to inform and educate you. Um, we'll look at some case studies along the way. Uh, and really, as a collective group, we want to move this industry forward by setting the agenda, by pushing the boundaries, by, by ensuring we as a group continue to innovate and evolve. Um, it's my pleasure today to introduce Matt Hingerty, who's uh, the Managing Director of ATEC. Um, Matt would like to say a few words just to uh, welcome us today, and I'll hand over to Matt. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Peter. Um, well, welcome, everybody. Uh, can I kick off by acknowledging the traditional owners and their ancestors? On behalf of all the hunter delegates here, can I welcome you all to this magnificent uh, part of Australia? Uh, we're really excited about having, and I'm speaking also on behalf of Tourism New South Wales and the local tourism organisations, we're really excited about having a symposium, but in particular this conference backpacker conference in this region. The Hunter has so much to offer uh, for the whole of the tourism industry, but in particular to this segment, whether it's the, the funky bars down here at Honeysuckle through to the adventure sports in Port Stephens, the, uh, the ballooning out in the, in the Hunter Valley. It is a, a prime example of... And it's also serviced, I should say, by an excellent airport offering uh, great low-cost options for, for travel to and from the district. So it's a great place to have it. I just want to cover off on a couple of other themes that we will be talking about over the next few days in the symposium, particularly for those of you um, who, who aren't kicking on. And uh, Peter, uh, to raise the point of innovation. Now, I didn't come up last night because I was uh, sitting in the ATEC office uh, finalising submissions to two of a, about 12 different federal government inquiries that are before the whole of industry, but in particular the tourism industry, the federal government's inquiring into just about everything that uh, opens and shuts in the Australian economy and uh, one of those areas is innovation. Now it's very appropriate that we are here this morning talking about innovation in our sector because if you go, I have to apologise, I can't stay for the rest of the day, I have to go out and schmooze our corporate partners on the golf course uh, this afternoon, it's a, it's a job that I have to do, but uh, if you took about um, three par fives in that direction you'll come to Nobby's Headland. I hope that's right, in that direction. And back in 1797, uh, a bunch of convicts were employed to put ballast into convict ships returning back to the UK, 1797. And 
they used rocks, but they also picked up these big lumps of black stuff from the base of the cliffs, which just so happened to be coal. And there was born the start of the great Australian coal industry, which is so much about this particular town, and it's so much about the Australian economy. But from that point on, from 1797, this massive institutional infrastructure in the Australian bureaucracy started to develop. You had the labour side of the equation being organised into unions, you had the industry side of the equation being organised into industry groups, chambers of commerce, and you had departments of industry, uh, particularly after Federation. We had the gold rush, we had the agricultural industry starting at about the same time, uh, even with the, with the first fleet. And there's great support networks in government and bureaucracy and in, and in the union movement emerged around these industries. Now, we've only been around, we've only been really around for 30 years. And uh, in terms of talking to, to governments and saying, we need your help to help us to innovate and go out and chase new markets, it's been difficult. It's been difficult. And what I've said to, on your behalf to the ministers who are inquiring into these matters is that, look, for the last uh, 200 years, you have given back some of the value that these great industries generate uh, for them to employ in research and development and innovation. Now it's our turn. And, and it's so crucial, ladies and gentlemen, that we turn our minds to innovating into new markets. And the reasons being, you all know, the dollar is impacting us. Uh, business inputs, the rising cost in business inputs is impacting us. Some of our older markets in general tourism, Japan in particular, is starting to fade. Uh, and it's a particularly crowded place. You're all world travellers. I no doubt many of you have been to the Middle East. I no doubt many of you have been to Macau and southern China and seen with great wonder the amount of infrastructure development and investment that is going into those destinations. John King, our chairman, came back from the Parta conference just a couple of weeks ago and said that in the Middle East, on the books, not yet developed, on the books, is 3.6 trillion US dollars of infrastructure and investment into tourism. And behind the, the stuff that they build, and you, we could be talking about Macau here, goes the marketing dollars, goes the underwriting of events and conventions. So it's a particularly difficult and crowded workplace. Now there's a growing feeling emerging amongst the tourism industry, within, particularly within ATEC, but also within some of the other tourism groups to say, we have great partners in government, in Tourism New South Wales and in TA, but for too long we've been relying on them to do a lot of the work. And what we need to do is to instil back into ourselves some of the pioneering days of the early days of the tourism industry 30, 35 years ago, where we actually got out and scoured the world, I'm talking in particular about ITOs here, and, and found new business and not relied so heavily on governments. And that's what ATEC is trying to do. We, uh, some of you will know that later this year we'll be taking our first ATEC pure trade mission for some time through to South America. Uh, Jen and I and BTAP have been talking about a potential presence at WISTIC, uh, if not this year, then the next. We're looking at new areas such as health and wellbeing, tourism, and this is a critical issue that this particular conference has to face. A creeping issue is that our key markets are starting to age, they're getting older. So we're going to governments and saying, look, there is some great IP and energy in our organisation that we could unlock with a little bit of investment. But when I look around this room and I see the future of the tourism industry. I really, really um, enjoy these conferences because there's so much passion. It's the heart and soul of the tourism industry, in my view, the, the backpacker market. And we're really going to need you going forward to chase, to use your passion, to use your entrepreneurship, that's a word, to chase down these extra markets and to open up these new areas of value for us. On Friday, I will be launching a um, discussion paper for ATEC members about the strategic direction that ATEC takes. The board has been spending a lot of time, the staff, uh, the wonderful staff that are here today, have been spending a lot of time thinking about where we go. Uh, education in particular, the education market, but also educating 
the young people in our industry about inbound tourism and providing career paths to them is a key element of that. So Peter, uh, Jen and all the team here, good luck over the, over the day. I hope it's controversial. Uh, I hope there's plenty of um, differences of opinion because that's what passionate people do. We like to have differences of opinion. We like to argue the toss on things and that, that's the way that we get progress. So thanks for coming, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.